Hey there, hi, welcome to the video. As you can see, today we're gonna do a little bit of a card trick. Let me show you guys a little bit of a hot card trick. It's an easy one. It's a mental thing, so you could read their minds and uh, you're gonna be able to perform this on your friends and family and uh, astonish them with your creativity as a magician. Uh, is this gay, by the way? Is this gay if I do this right here with the feet? Leave in the comments below. That's gay or not. Uh, but as far as that, let's just get into the introduction. <laughs> Is that gay? Is Dunkin' Donuts gay? All right, leave in the comments below if Dunkin' Donuts is gay. A little bit of a trick. It's not gonna be too hard to do, it's it's fairly easy. And it's, uh, you could say it's a do as I do if you want, it's not necessarily. Uh, but what we do here is we're gonna tell the spectator uh, to call stop anytime they want. Wherever they call stop, you get it perfect. Uh, sir, what I want you to do is uh, do exactly as I do. I want you to take, uh, why don't you take uh, top five cards, top five cards of the deck. And uh, why don't you uh, just look at them here and just uh, memorize one, think of one. As a matter of fact, take it out and show it to your friend. And the spectator's doing this with their half. Uh, and they show it to their buddy and they mix it inside of their half and then they mix that inside of their packet. And then that goes uh, there. And you're able to tell them the card they're thinking of. In this case, let's say the card to two of clubs. And you go, just think of, think of your card, concentrate on it, say it over and over in your head. I'm getting like a two of clubs, two of clubs, is that right? Is that great? Yeah, that's fantastic, sir. You're a wizard, Harry. You've really done your due diligence in practicing magic to the point where you have astonished me, sir. Uh, these nuts. Is that a good trick? That's a good trick. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, so this is how it's done. There are multiple ways. There are multiple ways to do this. You could either do this via stack deck, or you could do this via, via immigrants using their immigrant privilege to drive 100 miles per hour on your streets. Or you could do this with a small stack. It's gonna be up to you. If you wanna use the Cy Stebbins stack, if you wanna use the stack deck, that's gonna be your prerogative. It's gonna actually be a little bit more fair for a reason that we're gonna talk about later in the video. Uh, if you don't know what a stack deck is, you should check out a place called the um, the Pick Cake Magic Academy. $5 a month gets you two videos every single week, going over card stuff, going over uh, card stuff and coin stuff, card stuff and coin stuff. Also mentalism, that's $10 a month, but you're more than welcome to check it out. Link's gonna be in the description below, over six to 700 videos already, going over absolutely everything, everything. So check it out, link's in the description, $5, help yourself out, help me out. So you could use a stack deck or you could use a small stack. And in this case, the small stack is gonna be the two of clubs. Let's see here, two of clubs. It's gonna be the five of hearts. It's gonna be the eight of spades. It's gonna be the uh, Jack of Diamonds, and then lastly, the Ace of Clubs. With that, all my chances of ever seeing a vagina ever again have dissipated. So what, if you haven't noticed already, these cards have in common, is that they're mathematically correlated. So in this case, the two is three away from the five. The five is three away from the eight. Uh, same thing with the Jack and same thing with the Ace. And if you haven't noticed, they're also going in sequential order here in terms of suit. So we have the uh, clubs, uh, then hearts, then spade, then diamond, and then it loops all the way back to clubs. So this goes on top of the deck and you're gonna be ready to go. Now, the interesting part about this is not, not only do you know these cards, but you also know their position in the stack. So you know, for example, that the uh, eight is the third one you know that the five is the second one because they're not gonna be changing the order of these cards until after they pick the card, which is a little bit of a secret. So these cards are gonna go on top of the deck and uh, you're just gonna false shuffle these cards and keep them on top. That's just simply done by overhand shuffling the cards and making sure that this half over here goes in the back and that card stays on top. Magicians pretend like what we do is hard and, and oh no, years of practice. This, you think this takes years of practice? This takes seconds of practice. Everyone could be a magician. You're not special. So what you're doing here is you're gonna have the spectator call stop anytime they want. Wherever they call stop, I'm gonna take this half and place it in front of them. That's it. So now in front of them, what they have is your stack. You see how it's not hard. 
they have the stack in front of them and you're going to be ready to uh, instruct them as to what they are to do. So you're going to use this half as an example. You're just going to say, uh, just uh, do everything that I do here. I just want you to take the, we'll, we'll use five cards. Pretend like it makes a difference, but it has to be five in this case. So we'll just use five cards and I want you to take these cards and just look at them. Spread them out like a poker hand in front of you. So you're going to have the spectator do this and look at the cards and you're going to have them think of one. Now they could think of one and you're going to be able to reveal it with some pumping, but we're not trying to pump here. We're trying to make this work each and every single time. So the way that you find out the card the spectator picked is you're going to have them take the card out and show it to somebody. So when they do that, notice what you're doing is that you're looking at the card that they take out. So in this case, we know that the first card is going to be the two. The second card is going to be the eight. So, or sorry, the five. Uh, my math is a little bit on the uh, tart side. But uh, you know the actual cards and their position. So depending on the card that you see the spectator take out and show to the participant, you know the spectator's card. You see how sneaky that is? So this little bit of a hot ploy here is how you get the identity of the card. And you're going to have to pay attention. But once you see them take the card out and show it, you could look away. So you're not necessarily staring at them. You just want to know what card they touch to show the participant. After that point, that's it. Remember, they're doing this with this half. So they're looking at the cards that you already know the order. So depending on what card they take and they show to the participant, you already know what their card is. So you could have them mix the card up after that. So after they actually show it to the participant, they mix up the cards. They can mix it in this half. They can mix up the deck and you could tell them the card they picked. Are you serious right now? Is that it? That's that's it. That's how easy it is. Magic is not hard. Magic isn't hard. We pretend like it's hard. And my favorite question that we get asked is, oh, are you, uh, who taught you? And then you have magicians say, I'm self-taught as if that makes a difference. You are not special. So with the stacked deck, it works the exact same way. The only difference is that the spectator could cut the cards as many times as they want beforehand. So the spectators could cut the cards as many times as they want. And then ultimately what you do is that you are gonna tell them to cut the deck and to take the top five cards for them. So they take the top five cards for them. And now all you have to do is peek at the bottom card. So once you look at the bottom card, because it's a stacked deck, you're gonna be able to determine what these cards are in their hands. I sounded like a Russian mobster for a second there, but you're gonna be able to determine what the cards are in their hand because let's say this card happens to be a 10 and you know that the next card is going to be three after so this card would be a king per se and then you can make the subsequent connection for the rest of the cards so it's a lot more fair with a stack deck the only downside is that you are less liberal with the cards you have to only give them false shuffles and give them false cuts and uh, you're going to have to do it that way whereas with the original method that i showed here it's just any simple cut as long as you're not disturbing the top five cards of the deck that's a trick. I don't really know what else to say at this point, apart from, um, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, thank you guys for doing all the things that people do. Uh, make sure to watch the other videos, man. Make sure to watch the other videos. I dropped the video. I'm scratching my nuts right now. Make sure you watch the uh, other video. I've dropped some uh, videos as of late. Uh, there's one about uh, Zap, the hypnotic induction. Uh, also, check out the podcast. Check out the podcast, Ham Radio. That show, the link is going to be in the description below or pop up here somehow. Uh, and as always, remember that, uh, I don't know, uh, vote for uh, Bernie Sanders. Oh, no, he's out. Vote for Joe Biden. Wait, no, he's crazy. Kamala Harris? No, she's the vice president. for me. Vote for me.